Good intentions, uh, something I've been working on for a long time, something that I didn't know I was working on the whole time, but something that kind of came to life the more that I thought about it and the more life that I spoke into it, the more it became real from the music itself to teaching myself how to make beats, teaching myself how to rap, the magazine hard copies, the show, all of that. Those are all things that I spoke into existence and things that are an accumulation of my existence thus far, honestly. Me and Kyle's relationship as kids was complicated. Um, our family home life wasn't that great and both of us were dealing with kind of our own parts in that and so we butted heads a lot um but as we got older that changed radically and kyle's my best friend he just makes me so proud um he's just grown as a person as a man as a friend um and I think that music has a lot to do with that because it's helped him kind of heal and deal with things that he's been through and express himself in healthier ways than he used to. You don't know how much it means to me, it's clear to me. I gave you the best to me, but you brought out the worst in me. In dance in high school, in the dance class, um, we didn't know each other at first and um, he was like very introverted and I was the exact opposite at the time. And my teacher like came up to me one day and was like, do you know him? And I was like, no, I don't know him. She's like, you need to go be his friend because you guys would be like best friends. That's what she told me. And I was like, okay. She said, she said we'd be like rekindled souls. And I was like, that's a bit intense, but okay. So one day like I helped him stretch and I just walked over and I started pointing his feet and he was like, like not fucking with me. Like this girl's crazy. And I was like, oh no, we're going to be friends. And literally ever since then we've just been hella cool. Kyle had always made music, but when I found out, or when he found out that I could sing, he was like, cool, like, we need to make music. So we already had that in the plan, and then he moved to Baltimore, and then eventually, you know, he came back, and then everything just kind of happened naturally. You know, a lot, because I feel like this is our, like, history. Looking back, this is just our personal history, and it's just going to be so cool that, that this was all documented in it. Everybody that's always been a part of it from the very start, it's all, it's all here. So it means a lot. Um, you know, I have a lot of plans, but they're still plans, you know, I'm still working on it. But, um, I'm just trying to get some music out there. I'm just trying to make my own stuff. And I don't think I could be in the place where I am now without some direction from him. So. I miss you first impression of John when I first met him, I was drunk, Rico brought him over, and uh, he told me he made his own beats and that like, he was looking for a place to rap, and uh, from that point in time, I knew he was a cool dude, but just the more he came back, the conversation he would have was, was really deep, he was deep, solid, just like, good ass creative dude, bro, and uh, when we're in session together, he could just hop in the booth and rap for three minutes, nigga, and not mess up one time, finish the whole song roll up a backwood and just hop in there. He doesn't like to waste time or money. He's very professional and fluent with what he does. Uh, my favorite record he's ever done is called The Rain. Just like his, uh, his imagery and his wordplay is just like, it's incredible. Nigga makes his own beats too. He made the beat for The Rain. And just how he compares him, his life to his dad's life is just, it's solid. Nigga's probably one of the best rappers in sack, bro. Hands down. <laughs> John Katie's a solid dude, bro. Shit, me and Kyle's relationship is uh, it's a brotherhood. 
and it's, it's grown in multiple directions over time, you feel me? Loyalty, trust, you feel me? Just many tests came in between. We passed them every time. Ace them, straight ace. I originally envisioned, honestly, me making beats and Kyle rapping. But this dude got hot at the beats and got hot at rapping. But, hey, that's how it's meant to be. Growth. I see the growth and he talks about the growth. And it's just like, you need, you need that. You need, he talks about the hard times just because you need that to grow. It's a friendly reminder. Don't touch the hot stove or learn how to cook with it. And that's what I feel like when I, I hear. school and stuff but we really started kicking it it was like uh you know we're messing with the same girl kind of thing to be honest it was like this girl i was messing with uh you know went to prom and i was supposed to meet up with her after at this party and i she showed up and i was doing some of this and that and i met her like i seen her on the backyard and she was with kyle you know what i'm saying getting his but it was all good like that was the homie, and then we just like got more closer after that, kind of weirdly. But yeah, that's the homie. <laughs> My expectations for moving out to Baltimore. I didn't really have a lot of expectations because I didn't really know, you know, what Baltimore was about. But I'm the kind of person I've always been like, I want to try something new. I want to go somewhere new, experience just something new. Period. Get new sights and everything, and uh, especially with photography, I really just wanted to like get some shots out there, get that East Coast kind of vibe. And it was, it was very different. You know, Kyle's creative process, um, that was like, you know, woods were involved, bombs were involved all times, um, you know, but it was like, it's just a different vibe. Like I was saying out there, East Coast, it's just that vibe. And like, you know, you probably catch him in his room, just like making a beat, but Kyle's the kind of person he's determined each day he's gonna like do what he needs to do first, get up early in the morning, do his grind, and then come home and just make beats the rest of the night. Um, and it was no surprise, his lyrics always been there. Songs like The Rain, that's one of my favorite songs on the tape because it's really just me completely almost cleansing myself of all those feelings and really just speaking my truth and getting it off. Songs like Come Spend the Night and Keep Trying for You, which almost kind of symbolize the lack of a steady relationship and growing up around that and not knowing how to maneuver love and relationships. Um, songs like Black Night Skies, where I wrote that in 2015, and that was one of the first songs that I had written for the tape that I knew I was going to use for a mixtape. Um, I wrote that song when I was in a very dark place. I was doing drugs, I was wilding the fuck out, and I just thought that I had just lost hope. But I was still writing at that time, and that's what kept me focused, that's what kept me grounded. And then, once I moved back to Baltimore for the second time, um, I made the decision to not be employed and just be doing what I had to do to stay afloat and by myself the time to create and just make as many beats as I can, write as much as I could and really envelop myself in my artistry and that time paid off more than any of the negatives or downsides of anything that came with the decisions that I made. I firmly believe that the positives far outweigh the negatives and that all of that happened for a reason and this tape is that reason. Like I said, it's, a, it's an accumulation of my life this far and once I moved back home 
got in the studio with Scott, got linked up with Rico, started planning out the visual, me and T's, after being on the East Coast for a, for a year, came back, started putting together the magazine, knowing that it was going to be like an album booklet for the, for the hard copies that I wanted to make. These are all things that I spoke into existence and things that I personally felt like I had to accomplish for myself. And that's a lot of what this tape is, is me putting my 100% heart and intentions into one thing and accomplishing that and showing myself that despite anything I've been through, despite my feelings, despite my discourse, I still have the capacity to do whatever I want. And the world is really in my hands. I just have to grab it. How did the idea for the visual come about, shit? I think it was down there right on this nigga, um, Ja, slid back out here to SAG, you know what I'm saying? We linked up, and um, we was just talking about how he wanted to release the tape, and then one thing led to another, he was talking about he wanted to release a music video, and I was like, I was in the, along the lines of like passion kind of work. We started talking about it, talking, and then we just decided, you know what I'm saying, we were gonna shoot like a little, behind the scenes, documentary type journey of what led to him releasing the tape. And, um, you know, my creative vision for it, it was just, I wanted to keep everything like real raw, real down to earth and real like, just the true meaning of it, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to add no extra effects. I didn't want to do no over the top, like quality type shit. Just keep it real raw. Me and College Drive, how we compliment each other, shit, you know, it's just real creative people, you know what I mean? Um, he keep me on my toes, I keep him on his toes, you know what I'm saying? Like, for over the past like couple weeks, we've really been with each other down there like every day, on some, you know what I'm saying? Like, whether it be in the gym, whether it be at Scotty House in the studio, shit, whether it be at his house, just plotting on different shit. And I think that's what it ultimately really helped me too, cause like, like I said, it just, it pushed me to, you know, to keep, keep me in my creative mood, you know what I mean? Kyle, as a very young child, was extremely shy and didn't like to be around people. But when he was comfortable, he was really funny and silly and had a really infectious laugh that would get everybody else laughing. Uh, I think growing up, he was involved in a lot of athletics, and I think generally people kind of saw that as his path, but I could always see that sometimes he, that might not have been his thing, and so, you know, he always had this kind of arts uh, and music side and liked to kind of perform for people that he was comfortable with, and so I don't think it's totally surprising that he's gone this route. I'm really super proud of his talent and his drive to put the put all that together but also kind of sad because of the content of his lyrics just realizing the impact that some of the things over time has influenced him and affected him but in the overall picture I think it's been really good because he's been able to um, see here I go <laughs> uh, been able to express himself and I think that's been a really good outlet for him to get rid of some of that bad feelings. <laughs> hey, turn me down a little bit. Uh, turn me up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. KD from them Sacramento streets. Look, 
I'm just a complex thinker raised by problem drinkers Last thing that I'm afraid of be a misdemeanor That's why I'm speeding in this Lima like each day could be my last Cause every second counts when you race into this cash I'm sad to admit it but I'm caught up in this rat race And frankly I think most of these rappers be having bad taste And be selection and rhymes be a true reflection Of how hard they trying to be somebody else But not me, I made these beats myself And I taught myself to rap and I ain't need nobody help I've been gaining wisdom and focusing on my health And trapping to make investments towards generational wealth That's just some game I soaked up, but that ain't all I know Otherworldly knowledge like I spoke to God before I'm screaming fuck the world raw, no condom ho Niggas think they run this rap game, but they behind me though Shit, like I'm supposed to give a fuck Too busy bandaging these paper cuts, nigga what? Like I'm supposed to give a fuck Too busy bandaging these paper cuts, nigga what? Yeah I'm just trying to talk my shit Look no, I'm just trying to free myself from all these walls I've built Around myself, I'm only 21 Thinking about the time I've killed Feeling bad for myself Like, should I blast myself Before I reach my full potential? My mental capacity monumental They don't like me cause I got the complex of a god But they can never understand the complexity of my thoughts This shit is way too deep Should I think about late nights when I should be asleep? I wanna speak to the world But I'm too damn antisocial Detachment issues like a bitch So I be living by coastal State to state, solo dolo with it Supposed to be committed to this music shit, but when I'm hungry, I be drifting into them streets, filling them with that heat. I'm out in Baltimore, east side, kicking it with my creeps. I remember late nights rolling around in the Jeep. Now I'm riding in the Beamer, they look at me, little meaner. Like I'm supposed to give a fuck. Too busy bandaging these paper cuts, nigga, what? Like I'm supposed to give a fuck. Too busy bandaging these paper cuts, nigga, what? Ooh, 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 ooh